PDP Chieftain Ojong Ogbo has insisted that the problems of confronting Nigeria are caused by the mismanagement of the country by its past leaders, saying those who cause the problems cannot be the ones to solve them. Now I ask, can Nigeria's problems be solved just by young leaders? While discussing this today with me, we have social reformer Andy Akpotive, who's yet to join us, and public affairs analyst Uche Chuta. Thank you very much, Uche, for joining us. Yeah, hello, hi. All right. So, Uche, my first question is, th there seems to be less youth representation uh, in the country at all levels of government. And, I mean, even with the Not Too Young to Run bill that was signed into um, law by Mr. President uh, before uh, the 2019 elections, there still seems to be, you know, less and less younger people uh, in government. But um, there, even when you have young people that are serving in government, especially the ones who are anti-establishment, they hardly go far. What do you think is responsible for that? Well, it's an uh, old boys club. Um, and I even use the term boys, apart from men also, you know. So it's uh, like your friends. You invite your friends to the party. People see the Nigerian government as a Nigeria PLC, as, okay, it's an opportunity for you to come and join the party, have part of the national cake. So you bring your friends along. You don't necessarily bring well, people who can do the job. And so if an old man is elected, so if the head is old, he brings his friends who are the same age. And his friends who are the same age, in turn, bring their own friends who are almost the same age. So, you know, so before it gets down to the last layer, the age is still very high. So that's just basically the issue. You know, the president is old. And that's what happens when you have an old president whose friends are old. You can have an old president whose friends are young and then you can see it's ripple, you know, there's a ripple effect down. So that's basically what it is in Nigeria. I mean, we have old presidents in the US. I mean, Joe Biden is not a young man. Um, one of the oldest parliamentarians in the world is in the British parliament. I mean, there are old people all over the place. Is it, a, is it an issue of age or is it more of um, the heart of the person, uh, the characteristics of the person who's handling an office? Because we're, I don't know if we can make a distinction between being young and being capable of leadership or good governance. Maybe we need to have a clear distinction between that because if we're making it all about yeah. age, then we probably do have a problem. Yes, like it's, it still boils down to the first thing I said. What exactly do our leaders come into office to do? Are they coming to office to better the country? Or are they coming to just really just enjoy the largesse of the office? And it starts from there. Like they don't see it as a thing about, oh, we're coming to the country to make Nigeria better. They're seeing like we're coming to Nigeria to enjoy the commonwealth, to share the money. You know, and that's about it. So if they were coming into the country and uh, as, as leaders and saying, okay, I want to improve the nation, then naturally they will seek younger people who are competent to do the job. But right now, appointments are strictly by, are you my friend? It's not necessarily by, are you competent? So it's, so the factor of age and everything just goes out of the math. We have some old competent people. We I have no problem if we have old competent people. So, mm. for example, Joe Biden, who's the oldest elected official, he has all these young people doing different things in his government because he knows these are the people who have the capacity to do the job. He's interested in the, in the pushing, pushing forward of the Republic or the Republic, the U.S. Mm -hmm. That's his primary interest. I don't think that's the primary interest of the people who are in office right now. If it's their interest, they will look for the best person, regardless of age. So, again... I want to push you further. We have had young people mm -hmm. in government. We still do have young people who found their way into government. Even the ones which, you know, to, the ones who told us that they had the best interest and, and the ones we thought were very intelligent and bright and guys who would bring us good governance and, you know, accountability. And then halfway down the line, these guys seem to be almost in the same sweatshirts with the guys who've been there. So with all of the shouting and the screaming, oh, we're not too young to run, we want to run, step aside and let us get into power. How well have these young people performed? Let's, let's sincerely analyze them. Let's start with the well, likes they, of they, 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 Hollywood star. Uh, let's, let's start with Hollywood star, um, Lagos State yes, um, House of Assembly member. Um, hmm. What's his name now? Yes, you know who I'm Desmond talking about. Elliot. Yes, Desmond Elliott. Let's start with that. 
Okay, so these young people who entered office entered for themselves. Um, prior to not too young, um, four years before that, in 2015, we, if you can check this, we pushed an agenda, which I was at the forefront, 30% on nothing. 30% on nothing was a means of negotiation whereby we said, okay, officers who are coming into office, reserve 30% of your positions for young people. It could be appointed, elective was going to be more complicated because how can you reserve 30% for young people? You know, but we just said, okay, naturally, we're going to have capacity and competence. Now, in pushing forward this agenda, young people fought vehemently against it. And in hindsight, we now understand why they fought against it, because pushing that agenda was going contrary to the agenda of pushing um, uh, Mr. President, who is in office right now. And they all had dreams of, oh, 30% or nothing, I'm not in the clique. So that means I can't have my essay position, I can't have my small position, I can't carry it back for somebody, you know. So it went against everything that they believed in. So the young people who you see right now, most of them, 99% of them, and they can come prove me wrong, and they can tell me to my face and show me evidence on the contrary, they're there for themselves. They're there just to enrich themselves, be consumed part of the national cake. They don't care about the Republic. They don't care about Nigeria. They don't care about moving Nigeria forward. They might have the capacity, the competency, but that's not their primary interest. I'm going to push you further, but then um, we, we have our other guests joining us. Andy Akpotive is joining us also uh, live. Uh, Andy, can you hear us? Oh, unfortunately, we cannot hear uh, Andy. Uh, well, let, let's come back to you, um, Uche. Now, as much as we would like to say that these young people that you're referring to who are there to fill their pocket, they are a representation of us, the ones who maybe have the willpower and, you know, the best interest of Nigerians at heart. So why would anybody else want to let a young, people a young person back in office when we have seen what these young people that have found their way into office are capable of? Why would I want to throw my weight behind these young people? And let's not forget, even the case of young people who are still standing up against um, you know, bad governance, corruption. Look at what happened in October of 2020 with the NSAS protests. Young people were still co-opted to fight against these young people who had the best interest of Nigerians at heart. So really, are we ready for leadership in reality, seeing that the people who were maiming um, unarmed protesters, people who were coming to disrupt those protests, were young people like us.